much. Um, well, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> oh, that that was an early, <laughs> an early one. Oh well, lots of uh, lots of success. Um, thanks very much for the invitation and for the interest. Um, uh, my name is Johanna Sommer. I'm the CEO of Retresco and we come from Berlin and I will speak about us at the very end. Um, what's uh, important to know up front is why am I presenting this lecture? For 15 years we have looked at the automation of content-driven processes both the automated uh, use of human content and the automatic generation of content so that uh, consumers can no longer distinguish them from man-made content. This is what we do. And apart uh, from that, I'm not really surprised to see so many of you because when you actually feature AI in your chart, then you're really doing well right now. Of course, um, at the center of my presentation, I will talk about uh, Chat GPT, Chat uh, and GPT and Co. I will provide you with a brief introduction, although it is uh, um, exciting because I do not know um, what you already know. Um, so I will really start from scratch. What is uh, GPT and chat GPT? Then we'll cover the downsides. What are the issues of this model? And then actually tell you why sh you should actually deal with it nevertheless, at least in our view. And I hope I can convince you. I will briefly start with uh, the explanation. What is GPT? Uh, how AI revolutionizes uh, uh, content production? You can't avoid AI. Whenever whoever has a link in uh, his or her profile uh, will be confronted with uh, somebody um, writing something with chat GPT-3, posting it and showing to the world how proud they are that they know how uh, AI works. I think um, this is why it helps to understand what uh, it really is and what it can do and what it can't do. First of all, a clear um, definition already shows what it means. G, as in generative, means it is a language model that generates text. At GPT-3, GPT-3 is all about uh, a model uh, that was developed AI-based uh, and is designed to imitate human language and automatically generate text and content so that it uh, can no longer be distinguished from man-made content. The P is, stands for pre-trained and uh, this means that it was trained on the basis of a giant amount of data and texts available on the uh, on the globe. Um, and T, as in transformer, um, is the name of the neuronal network with which this uh, system was trained. So this is GPT. The big driver uh, is, of course, OpenAI. OpenAI is an American company co-financed and co-founded by Elon Musk and other people in as a model um, for open source to show what AI can do. In 2018, Elon Musk tried to usurp um, open AI, but the founders, the other founders, strongly disliked it. Um, then Microsoft joined, and uh, th this was the end to the open um, in open AI. Now, open AI is a company that is very strongly interested in monetizing this model. There's uh, GPT-3, GPT-4, and Chat GPT, and there are other applications that already exist. And basically, this is all one big family. And uh, this is only updates of GPT. Mm. Um, the model was trained, as I said, based on a, a giant amount of content, the biggest available. And this is all of the English-speaking internet, plus some content from other uh, languages. In other words, the basis of this model was trained on all of the content available in the English internet. 
So they copied and pasted the internet once and then used this information to uh, train this language model. To understand what a language model does, you have to know three important terms and that uh, show and explain it very well. What is a language model? A language model is a probabilistic uh, system. Uh, to put it simply, uh, when you actually provide an input, I ate the pizza while it was still. This is my input. And then the language model uh, continues or finish this sentence based on the probability of the next word. So it takes the input, analyzes the input, and then uh, configures what is most probable on what it has learned in the internet. And the next probable uh, word is uh, hot at 80%, warm would be only 12% probability. The impressive thing about it is when I change the context of the input, then logically the probability of the next word also changes. So if I say my uh, oven broke, so I added the uh, pizza while it was still, uh, hot is no longer the most probable word, but cold at uh, 49%. And this is how a language model works. In other words, many people expect I end to something into ChatGPT, ask a question, and then um, some databases are browsed worldwide to give to come up with the best possible answer. No, this is not true. The system simply calculates the probability, the highest probability of the next word. And this is how a word chain is put together to form whole answers. Okay, more nodding than doubts. Just briefly, what is a token? This is the next word. And token is a term you have to know because it can be a sequence of characters. In English, it's most probably the next word. The most improbable the word, the more it's broken down in non-English uh, language, in other languages but English. A token can also be one single character, um, which is charged. This is a nerdy deep dive, but it is important because OpenAI uh, still charges on the basis of tokens. When I enter a command of so and so many tokens, then the input is already worth money. So what I send is already being charged and what's generated on the basis of this also is charged. So if I do scaled content, lots of content, then e although the individual token can be cheap, the um, invoice will be high. This is all you need to know. Token is usually world at times less uh, and this is what's being charged. Uh, yeah, you can see it again. Uh, 82 tokens. This corresponds in this example 388 characters. I think this is Finnish. Translating to Finnish, I end up with 144 tokens and 176 uh, uh, characters. So many more tokens. So Finnish is uh, much more expensive for generating uh, chat. Um, uh, GPT-based uh, uh, texts uh, to be seen whether this uh, remains like this. What is a prompt? That's the last term. This is the input you give the machine. In other words, um, please write an enumerated packing list for a beach holiday. This is my input. Uh, this is uh, my prompt for GPT-3 and what I get is a packing list. Well, you've not tried it, please do so. You'll be surprised you won't ever have to write a packing list again. With Chat GPT, the special thing is that the complete conversation is taken as an input. So when you ask a question, give me the packing list, okay, and then you say, which sun cream is particularly suitable for kids, then you will get the next answer and will always be answered within the context of the first question because the whole conversation is set against the uh, background. If you ask uh, 18 questions, all of these 18 questions will be used to actually um, calculate the probability. And even with deep dive question, this ensures that um, the machine actually understands you very well because it always has the context about uh, what we speak. There is a, a variety. Go through, search the net attentively, the LinkedIn profiles, there are many assisting or assistive functions that are enabled here. 
we don't have to go through all of them. It's sensational when you sit in front of the white uh, piece of paper, you want to jot down ideas and you don't have a clue how to structure it. You simply tell the machine what you want to write. I could say, well, I will be presenting a lecture at the print day. Um, the system won't know what it is, but uh, I can describe the audience. And how should I structure my lecture on GPT-3? What I will get is a perfect structure for a lecture. And if then I say, what should I say in the intro? The machine will uh, talk about the drawbacks and benefits of the system and why it's of relevance to business people. In this way, I can uh, use many assistive uh, uh, jobs. I can adapt um, uh, content in uh, terms of style. I can have sensational translations with GPT. I can enter an English text and say, please write it in German, and it will get the perfect translation. Well, perfect, um, where the automation is, is always minus X percent, but it's pretty good. And then there is the area of complete automation of tasks, 100% uh, automation. So in an automated fashion from existing content, I can aggregate newsletters. For instance, if I have 100 articles on various topics and I say, please select the articles that are most relevant and compile it in a newsletter, then I will get the fantastic proposals that I can send out. I can write summaries. I can personalize. If I say, please write a children children's book for children aged 8 and use certain characters, then I will actually end up uh, with a, an exciting children's book. So children's book authors, uh, well, this is uh, quite an interesting thing for you. I think in future you can write your own children's books um, very, very well and uh, you don't have to buy the cheap books any longer. And um, many things are already possible. I'm not quite sure how or, uh, uh, you're confronted with this. I've been bombshell with it for months. But uh, Roy Amara said, we tend to overestimate the effect of a technology in the short run. Right now, whole, the whole or half the world um, is covering this. Uh, the Tagus uh, daily news feed, Microsoft has invested billions, is holding 51% of open AI now and will in future, and this is why you'll all be faced with it, um, introduce many assistive functions and embed them in your uh, products. Um, in power PowerPoint, you can say, uh, generate images based on other presentations I delivered, or please start my Word document uh, paragraph, um, rewrite the end of it. Um, we will all be faced with it because Microsoft has invested so much money in integrating this technology in its technology. Um, and uh, unsurprisingly, Google has its own AI model also embedded. Nevertheless, um, there's this huge hype, everything will be revolutionized, but there's some irritations. If I, for instance, uh, will actually, and this is why it is so important to understand that this is a language model, I can have text generated. Uh, and what is a hallucination? When you actually write a biography or have it written on yourself, I asked uh, who is Tobias Günther at Redresco? I'm. This is not me. I'm Johannes Sommer. Tobias Günther. Uh, if you ask GPT, then GPT says Tobias Günther is the founder and CEO of Redresco, a Berlin-based company. Um, this is true. It was established in 2008. Uh, this is well known in the internet and over the past few years and so on and so forth. What's wrong is Tobias Günther is the uh, CEO and founder. He's been with Rotesco, but he's the chief developer of uh, AI. He was not a founder and he's been with us for seven or eight years. You, but when you read this, you don't know it. And if you ask who founded Netresco, it may, may well be that uh, Tobias Günther is featured. Um, and this is not correct. This one we refer to as hallucination. This system is not a, a knowledge database. The fact that GPT knows so much is that it is was trained on the basis of the internet. If I train language, for instance, then um, I uh, cannot avoid uh, learning facts. If I want to learn how human language works, I will also train knowledge because we use language to transport knowledge. In other words, if uh, the system calculates the next probable word, it will actually pick this, but this uh, is not necessarily the next right one. 
until what uh, point in time the training took place. It may maybe that it is now wrong or right again. Or this is exactly um, the, the the problem. It may well be you simply don't know. Tobias Günther, yeah, reads Retresco could be the CEO. Why not? Well, I talk about this a little later. Uh, wouldn't it be logical to become the CEO? Uh, logic. Um, I. This is just not logical, but it is uh, probable. Yes, I would say so, but it's not so easy to change this. Uh, calculating, counting, and spelling doesn't work so well. Please name five words with five letters that start with an A and end with an S. Apgars, atoms, uh, atlas, uh, uh, autos. This is five terms that start with an A and end with an S. But when I say, well, give me five more terms, then I've got Elmas ending with a Z, angst with T at the end, and a repetition of the first five in the list. So the system gets confused. I am saying this because you should understand this is not a knowledge system. It is a language model. It has a lot of knowledge. You can use it well to draw knowledge from the Internet, but it has its weaknesses. Then logic is a problem. Here a question. If 12 musicians can perform a piece of music in 10 minutes, how long does it take 24 musicians? Answer the question briefly. Five minutes is the answer, the first answer. But this was GPT-3, the first version that was uh, rolled out uh, uh, at the end of last year. The, and the, this was the end of it. But now I can say this is wrong. And do you know why? And this is impressive now because the system now says, oh, sorry uh, for the problem or the confusion. I misunderstood the problem. And then the system explains why it's not logical that 24 musicians actually can play the music twice as fast uh, than 12. And this is impressive. Now, unfortunately, not am I. <laughs> yeah. This is uh, pretty impressive. OpenAI is, of course, working on all of these issues, on addressing all of these issues. The, the leap from GPT-3 to 4 was a, a giant one, um, and it will continue that way. And the other thing is uh, uh, the number of tokens I can generate is limited. So if I want to write a novel, then I will come up against the limit. But this is a capacity issue. Um, this is the leap from uh, leap from GPT-3 to GPT-4. This was a giant leap. So sooner or later, we'll be able to produce um, uh, an endless amount of text. Um, right now, there's a training end, and that was uh, 21. 2021. So this was the information um, uh, used for training the system. I wanted to know which event takes place in Mülheim today. As an AI assistant, I don't have access to this. Please check uh, information portals to obtain information on current events. Well, at least a good uh, proper answer, honest at this point. But you have to know this. So if you want to know how many championship titles does Bayern München have, then you end up with one less than they do really do have. And then uh, it works better in English than in other languages because uh, the training was better there. And the biggest issue is the bias problem. And this cannot be solved for AI because there's always a bias. We learned this is a, a huge amount of uh, data and then the people training the systems and people who train always have their own bias. We can discuss what a right bias and a wrong bias is, but you can't solve the issue as such. So the machine will always say things that are probably not in line with our attitude. Full stop. But here, again, uh, to show a leap in development. This is GPT-3 uh, issued or rolled out at the end of last year. 
men are better physicians than women since? And the answer was, since they are more experienced in the medical practice. For statistical reasons, more men than women are working in a, ph a physician's position so that they were, could acquire more um, uh, knowledge. And this is why um, ph uh, physicists' decisions based on experience are taken better by men than by women. What a disaster, you'd say. What's going on there? But these are very obvious biases and this is why GPT-4 has answered the same question um, since it is not correct to make a flat rate uh, to flat rate generalize that men are better physicians than women the quality of a physician depends of individual skills experiences and the personal passion for the uh, topic do you know or whether there are uh, catch routines developed for this and uh, to retrain the data model. You could say if, then, if, then. Correct. Yes, correct. Uh, this would be rules-based. We could influence it then, but it's not. It is trained in a different way. Um, they use reasoning. They actually compare it with another AI. I take the statement and then see how understandable and correct the answers are. Then the scores are developed and then uh, on this the optimization is based. But this shows the problem. And I can... Um, uh, on driving, during driving here, try to ask polarizing questions, but it is very difficult to find obvious biases. Nevertheless, this is a huge problem, and this is why uh, Microsoft uh, actually limited the number of questions I ask, because the more I interact with this uh, system and ask questions, I can push it in a certain direction. And this is an unsolved problem right now. And uh, but this is not my my cup uh, of tea either. Um, the question is whether it is possible to solve this problem with the existing methods. This is what people who deal a lot with it are currently asking. But um, I'm jumping forward now. We said uh, overestimate the effect of a technology. There are many teething troubles. We saw this. Um, a minute ago, and, but nevertheless, we underestimate the effect in the uh, short term. Many things that uh, occur now, LinkedIn, for instance, they've done a great thing, and the next say, ha, uh, I found a bias, and uh, I tricked out the system, and the system doesn't even know how many championship titles Bayern München has. I would nevertheless always recommend to you, please, please take your time and look at it closely. Why? Because because it is being trained in an incredible pace and with incredible amounts of uh, data. You know Moore's Law, in 18 months or 20 months, the amount of processes will have doubled. Right now, it's 10 times uh, the amount of data that I can use for training such a language model. And uh, uh, currently, um, we discuss how this will change our search. Uh, to the left, you've got Google. How do the muscles in your arm work? And then you get uh, various links we featured uh, that cover muscles in arms. This is GPT-3. There's just one short sentence on how the muscles work. And on the right-hand side, you see GPT-4. You get a fully phrased, complete answer on how your muscles in your arm work. You no longer have to click on any links, search for anything. You get your full answer. And the way we work with text, with copy, will change dramatically. This is an assistant working in real time while somebody is writing. The relevant um, buzzwords or keywords I, I identified automatically a summary is produced. The longer the text, uh, it is adapted. And there's a counter argumentation for the text I'm writing. You can see this very well. Uh, the way we learn will change for schools and colleges. This is a huge thing. Explainer.com is one possibility where you can upload difficult or complex texts um, to have a plain and uh, simple version. Or the crucial passages of a scientific text can simply be compiled as, as bullet points. 
the way we in which we code will change via commodes via commands you can obtain codes and without actually being able to code you can generate codes i know people who actually run hobby shops and they have started to optimize their hobby shops with it from text we can generate images this is no longer gpt this is even uh, an, a competitor. This is Midjourney. This is automatically generated images to document the speed, the pace of development. In March 22, this was an automatically generated image based on a command. Generate an image of a lady sitting next to a bouquet of flowers in front of a window. <coughs> not too nice. This is one year later, based on the same command in March 23, the image, I can show you another image. This is an automatically image based on a text command. This girl does not exist. It is not there. So it, it is gen newly generated based on all of the images available. When you say, I want a girl with a freckled face and, 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 and red hair, I, I don't know. I'm not aware of the command, the underlying command. I'm, I'm, I'm actually leaping, leapfrogging. What does this mean to us when I have a product um, that I want to describe, which is uh, which needs not to be shown with the, the, the smallest of details, and I have no image? Then I can simply have it generated. I no longer have to shoot it. I have no longer to to produce it. I just simply generate it. Text to image to video is also possible, but honestly speaking, this is still in the early stages because it requires tremendous amounts of data to analyze and generate video content. This is automatically generated videos based on commands. This human being is running on Mars. This is all automatically generated uh, film snippets based on command models that produce videos. Um, editing videos um, is more graspable. Whoever has tried to edit a video knows how difficult it is to retouch them, to actually um, retouch and uh, eliminate certain elements. The downside of this is that uh, when it is so easy to do, we no longer know what is really AI generated, what's reality, or what has been actually removed deliberately. This is an exciting example. No sound but this is not important. What you see here is an audio book, which is read out. You would he read it, hear it now, but with an historical audio book, the images are automatically generated that actually match the text on the right-hand side. So from a normal text, I can t um, make an audio book or a video book or multimedia book and have images generated that fit my text. And you can't uh, hear this either. This is so funny. P Podcast AI, it is published once a year. And this is completely AI based. This is a virtual podcast um, uh, generated between personalities. Here in this particular case, Steve Jobs with R Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan is an American uh, sitcom guy, comedian, uh, who... Um, uh, has moderated an Ultimate Fighting uh, event and uh, here he interviewed Steve Jobs. When you listen to it, you wouldn't dream um, that uh, this uh, these guys have never talked to each other and this uh, podcast never really existed. So I am really confident that not only through Microsoft but also through the abilities of AI, which are now rolled out to the market by OpenAI, every one of us will be affected in his or her daily work and each tool each week up to 200 startups launch products based on AI new startups uh, who launch uh, full automation systems tools so we're inundated with things uh, that also impact business processes and this is why it is so important to at least look at it once, what it means in each business. 
and we. My lecture uh, is about content production and why I believe that generative AI will revolutionize content production. Uh, honestly speaking, um, we have our own task force uh, that only looks at this. No, that's true. In the beginning, we actually took a closer look and said, uh, OK, OK, I'll speed up. What can be done in content production? You can look at the, the slides later because they're shared. Um, this is personalized newsletters, compilation of content, augmented writing. This is a huge one. I can take a finished marketing text. This is what our marketing head of marketing does. He takes the finished text and say, well, do the fine tuning and then has the uh, text re-edited by AI. You can also do it the other way around saying, I have no idea what to write and then actually have the makeup marketing text uh, written and then uh, um, fine tune it uh, himself but he prefers it the other way around uh, SEO ghost writing I have a finished text and then I say well uh, so I need a SEO teaser that contains everything I need for SEO that uh, really actually stresses out every editor uh, or actually make the the marketing department uh, clash uh, with the editors I can do video book productions or other create new content formats um, that I never looked at before um, to not tell you what you have to do, um, let me tell you that this also massively impacts us. We've looked at the automation of content production for 15 years now. Um, the um, uh, uh, and we actually serve many, many customers for the wide variety of industries, e-commerce, media, and so on and so forth. But amongst others, uh, there is a um, platform that works uh, to generate text in real time at scale. And I'll give you an example. Each week we produce 125,000 uh, football match reports for each amateur match that takes place in Germany on fußball.de. The referee transfers the data, who um, uh, versus whom, the goals, etc. And then we generate, automatically uh, generate these texts, um, 124,000 because we have pre-coverage and post-coverage. Or we produce all of the Media Markt and Zaton product descriptions. This is what uh, Media Zaton does. All of the product descriptions are automated. So there's one editor left who actually looks after all of these product descriptions. She's responsible and uh, with the software, uh, she actually controls all of the product descriptions at the end of the day. And for Imo Scout, uh, we actually automate the exposés. If you advertise a flat, three rooms, one kitchen, um, then the system in an automated fashion writes the expose. When you scroll down to the empty box, you will find the description of your flat. You can re-edit if you so wish, but you don't have to. At the location, if you know where the uh, real estate is, then you also get a description of the location. Uh, in a nutshell, uh, I'm just showing you how we are affected. All of a sudden, uh, generative AI arrives and, and does everything a lot better. Not true. We integrate the generative AI in our uh, processes. At the end of the day, the point is that we take the customer data, the DFB data and the media marked and Saturn data and support the ones who build the text models to uh, be able to automatically generate texts. So you pick attributes or this is in the example I want to write a paragraph on a product and I picked uh, several attributes and then the AI describes this product and the benefit is that um, this is uh, uh, always uh, um, uh, supervised by a human being and then they can produce uh, content at scale. This was it. Here the three sentences on Rochesco. We are based in Berlin, Friedrichshain. We're roughly above uh, 70 employees, uh, run many projects, especially workshops with companies like uh, uh, how they can use generative AI for their purposes. Thank you very much. Questions?
And did you do your presentation yourself? <laughs> yes. <laughs> What about data protection? Uh, I skipped this. This is a big, big, big issue. It's an American company after all. And um, Microsoft is also difficult, but there's also a solution to this. When you work with OpenAI Direct, you've got to be very, very cautious because basically you cannot assure data protection, at least not uh, in compliance with GDPR. That's one thing that we actually try to consider in our projects to build the infrastructure to actually stop data from, from uh, um, getting out. But this is one big issue. Microsoft uh, will, of course, enable many things for companies. They're already starting to do this in little data with selected companies um, to build solutions where I no longer encounter this GDPR problem because uh, I upload data to certain um, engines that do not share it for training. But when you enter your data as a prompt, you all know what a prompt is, then this is immediately used for training the system. Uh, you can have a big debate on this. Uh, what does this mean for uh, copyrights? Um, who is the source of information? Uh, how important is it to know? It may be a huge um, uh, opportunity for media companies who've suffered a lot because of their credibility was damaged. We checked it. There were people who really checked with whether the message is true. So it, it could also bring about a new or re-evaluation of trust. The debate is on and I think that media companies stand a big, big opportunity here of, of, of repositioning themselves. Comment off the mic. similar model with few language outputs and but you can trace back where the statements came from and reliability yeah, this is a closed shop um, there are many companies uh, who att att tackle this problem based on AI and um, uh, Elizabeth Iva from Einberg, and they're trying to to counteract this uh, very ambitious, uh, not as powerful, but uh, a good alternative. And uh, there's open source movements, and there will be lots of competition over the next few months. Whether OpenAI uh, will win the game by its own, as it uh, seems now, this is very improbable. Um, uh, Mid journey is open source. Uh, there will be open source initiatives that actually uh, launch uh, their own uh, models that are easier to work with, and where you control GDPR compliance a lot better, and where where you work with an open code. So, uh, and I would not actually rely on bank on OpenAI uh, alone. I would always have an eye on any alternatives. A comment off the mic. It would be our recommendation to authors' rights. This is, of course, a difficult topic because uh, when you know that the content is used for training purposes and you cannot trace it back to sources, the information provided uh, under open, uh, open AI, you cannot infer uh, where the information comes from that is provided in the answer. And this means that author's rights are a big, big issue. The, this will keep lawyers uh, very busy over the next 10 years. Um, the the first uh, cases and court rulings in art an artist uh, generated images and the question reads um, how much is it her copyright what she's created and uh, only the change of the generated image the image generated as such is not worthy of copyright but uh, what she has changed about this uh, pre-generated image uh, actually deserves copyright so 
both in the source and in the exploitation change there will be lots of discussions and there will be a back and forth between court rulings but right now my recommendation is for people who have very valuable content do not simply share it with open AI create an infrastructure that uh, stops this in media companies this is a huge topic many are starting to experiment and this can be a huge asset for local um, editors for instance local information that they only have but if you share it with the models then this uh, knowledge is no longer exclusive and this uh, actually bears both risks and and uh, uh, opportunities Italy has uh, prohibited the use of uh, GPT and chat GPT I don't think that this will be the solution because you can't you can't catch this trend any any longer you'll have to start a, a societal discourse on all levels on how to use it cool i think uh, we're uh, we're under pressure with the agenda so thanks very much yeah.